Hey, and welcome back to another video. This is the third episode of the story in which Naruto is blind. Please support by liking and subscribing. Let's start the show. S. Sasuke. I panted, eyes flickering around the chakra enclosed space, trying to get my senses to get a grip on my surroundings and feeling freezing air wafting off the chakra that I could only sense as a wall of blurred energy. I, I can't, it's solid, the sounds bounce, it's all a blur. Just stay close to me, he gasped out, stepping closer, his footsteps echoing against the stone and making my unsteady perception waver uncertainly. I couldn't pin down where I was or where our enemy was, couldn't even tell how big the dome was. It was disconcerting, more even than stepping blindly onto a road I didn't know, and I moved until I stood close at Sasuke's heels, straining my ears to try and hear something, anything, that would help. How had things gotten so bad this quickly? One minute it was a fairly normal day, albeit weird, thanks to Sensei pulling us from tree climbing to, help guard Tazuna, and the next, there was shot cold mist everywhere, sticky blood slicking the floor, Zabuza at Kakusha Sensei's heels and another random ninja on me and Sasuke's. Just stick close, my friend repeated, his clothing shifting as he moved lower to the ground, me copying him straight away. We're gonna be okay, Naruto, I promise. We'll be okay. Just hang in there. His fingers brushed faintly against each other as he formed hand seals, and his chakra began to flare out, Gukeki no Jutsu. Heat exploded all around the dome, and I immediately guessed at its size from the range of the fire that I could feel, getting something about 15 to 20 meters across, but I couldn't tell how far up it went, or how thick the outer wall was. There was a hiss of steam, water. Boiled off from the splashes on the bridge, and Sasuke gasped slightly. That won't work, said a vaguely feminine voice, kind of familiar, actually, but I had more important things to worry about. These mirrors won't melt under that kind of firepower. What? I whispered, frowning as my mind connected everything I had heard. Melt, hiss, water, mirrors, ice. That explains the cold. Mirrors off ice, Sasuke had tried to melt them, but they were, they were the walls, they were shielded and bolstered with the chakra that was blocking my full senses, they wouldn't melt from just Kakaku, I cried out as pain suddenly rippled across my front, the force of the blow, no blows many ow fuck that hurt, sending me flying backwards and landing flat on the ground, Sasuke slamming down next to me a half second later. What the fuck was that? I gasped out, shaking my head violently. I had barely, barely caught that, the tiniest waver of chakra before I was sent flying. Where is he? Sasuke growled, pulling himself to his feet. The real body, where's he hiding? It's useless to try to keep up with me with your eyes, the voice said, coming from everywhere at once, like a whole lot of clones, all speaking at the same time, but this was too sharp and precise for clones, they were. Always a little out of beat, what was going on? I won't be caught so easily. What should we do? I asked, standing up slowly and turning my head blindly, trying to get a lock on a chakra source that wavered slightly like it was moving, but was too solid to be. It was honestly like he was coming from everywhere at once. Sasuke swallowed, gasping nervously. Just stay close to me, he ordered. We'll be okay, Naruto, don't worry. I gasped in a breath, the cold searing my mouth and nose and throat and chest and so loud rasping over my tongue and my heart was thundering in, where was Sasuke? The chakra around me was echoing, shifting a wall of white noise cold loud can't see can't hear what's going on Sasuke where are you, Naruto move. I heard him shout, and reflexively threw myself to the side. Flashes of chakra and flashes of energy and flashes of hot and cold cold so deep and harsh and freezing it burned sharper than fire and pricks of force that exploded in shocking bursts of pain as I crashed heavily to the concrete floor of the bridge. Hot liquid was starting to soak my jacket, but I barely registered it, throwing myself away in response to another of Sasuke's shouts, clinking, deflecting. And then blood rushed through my ears as adrenaline took over and everything smashed together in a frenzy of unfamiliar sound. I heard vague swearing, drop to the floor, 
tiny prickles of pain that vanished almost instantly, tried to scramble to my feet, tried to hear, everything echoing and rippling and that chakra signature's annoying insubstantial wavering, I do not want to fight you. That makes two of us, I thought, a little hysterically, finally getting my own feet under me again and backing away from where I thought I'd heard the voice coming from, but with all the echoes it was so hard to tell, I couldn't see, couldn't hear Sasuke where are you? I don't. I do not wish to kill you, the voice continued, hauntingly familiar, but I shoved it away in favor of dodging the next flurry of attacks, yanking a few of the needles from where they'd landed, Senban that explained the pricks, it is difficult for me to be a shinobi. I do not want to kill you. And I do not want to be killed by you. Sasuke brushed against my arm and I almost collapsed with relief, or was that blood loss? And slipped into place a half step behind him as we circled the walls radiating sheer cold. My friend was keeping our opponent busy, I could hear them exchanging words, no weaponry thank god, though I was too preoccupied to pay attention, while I searched frantically for a gap in the coldness, a weakness or fault that we could escape through. I had just determined that there were no slips in the wall of icy chakra when Senban skittered near my feet and I sprang away reflexively, spinning to face where they had come from, but just a split second later there was a flicker from behind me and I dropped to the floor, skidding to the side and regaining my feet as rapidly as I could, scrambling away and struggling to keep my bearings, I'd lost Sasuke again, and everything was flashing and flickering with chakra and splashes of ice-cold water. Impressive. Sasuke hissed sharply from just in front of me, and I latched onto the sound, my mind swirling and focusing and suddenly I could hear again, the world clearing fast. Impressive, my friend snarled. You're beating us around like so much driftwood and that's supposed to be impressive. Ah, Sasuke's temper was beginning to kick in. He was usually quiet, up until you pissed him off. I had discovered this inclination at the tender age of four years, two months, and have never forgotten it. You are surviving. This in itself is no small feat, Sasuke snarled again, but further. The blonde one. You have done well to come this far, in your condition. I have never before seen a successful ninja who could not see. My heart stopped. Sasuke's warm chakra and body heat moved closer to me in response, while I sucked in a horrified, shocked breath. Eight years, eight long, difficult years, and no one had ever figured it out, except for this one person. Sasuke and his brother, I'd told them, but this person, this enemy, figured it out all. On. His. Own. And that scared me to hell. It was hard to see at first, our opponent continued, but now. It is clear to me. You move like a child in the dark, only half sure that you're not about to stumble upon a piece of furniture. You rely on senses that my demonic mirror's technique scrambles. You are. An amazing person, to have survived this far. But now, I fear I cannot allow this to continue. I must protect the person I hold dear. Sasuke's sleeve brushed my arm, the cold ice that had formed along it making my skin prickle. Please don't hold it against me. He is the only reason I fight. I fight for the sake of his dream, because I want to make that dream a reality. His dream. Is my own. And for the sake of that dream, I will kill my heart and become a true shinobi. If I must. I will kill you. Oh fuck, I muttered and then bolted on Sasuke's heels, zigzagging closer and away in a mad attempt to throw off the ice user. Stabbing pain in my back and shoulders told me it wasn't working, but it wasn't as frequent as before, even as I slipped and skidded on half-melted ice and very nearly lost my balance. Then I really did lose my balance as someone screamed. Was that Sakura? Sasuke murmured from above and to the left of where I was sprawled on the ground. It sounded like Inari's mother, actually, I said, lifting my head. Nah, it's just echoing funny. Sensei left shadow clones to watch the house, you told me. It's gotta be Sakura. A smattering of needle pricks across my shoulder blades reminded me that sitting still and gossiping wasn't smart. I heaved myself upright, wondering how much more of this we could take. 
Sasuke was doing something now, I didn't know what. He was. Shouting, there was heat, his chakra was surging, oh. He was breathing fire again. I felt panic climbing up my throat as I realized how out of touch I was, how the mirrors and the revelation that this person knew my secret was affecting me. It was just like several days earlier, when I had gotten lost in the sound of the ocean, only a hundred thousand times worse, because this time as I floundered, I could still perceive enough to know that Sasuke and I were in great danger, that Sasuke was getting hurt. Something connected solidly with my shoulder and I went flying to the left, landing hard and rolling several times. Sasuke gave a grunt that hid pain and, with another wave of crackling heat and flickering chakra, shot off another stream of fire. From the direction the noises were coming in, I guessed he was standing directly where I had been. It took a moment for my scrambled mind to connect the dots, and I pulled myself together and focused just on doing that, clinging to the single lifeline I had keeping me from slipping into the suffocating darkness that always lingered around me. My breath caught when I realized, Sasuke had, Sasuke had shoved me aside, out of the way of an attack, and had taken the blow himself as a consequence. I could hear the echoing voice of our enemy, hear him speaking to Sasuke, something about precious people, and for some reason, the phrase tugged at a string in my memory. I shook the feeling aside, it was unimportant. I focused on my senses, closing my eyes uselessly to give me a sort of psychological aid a trick I had learned a long time ago from a teenager I had thought of as a brother. Okay. I was on my stomach on the wet ground, the wooden planks of the half-finished bridge cold underneath me. Sasuke was off to my right and a little behind me, fending off an attack that seemed to come from all sides at once, though whether that was true or I just couldn't pinpoint its origin, I had no idea. To my left. Well, to my left, I could sense a wall of some kind, blocking airflow and radiating cold, the ice, part of the ice dome the enemy had created. I was near the edge of the dome. Noon's eyes were on me. I could get out. Not taking a single second to think it through further, I acted on the impulse, jerking my legs up underneath me and dashing for the small gap I knew there had to be right there, because there was a slight breeze and air didn't flow through ice. If I managed to slip out of this bastard's ring of icy doom, I might be able to attack from outside. Or at least drag Sensei's arse over here to rescue us. Wasn't that his job, anyway? I had barely gone two steps before something collided solidly with my stomach and carried me backwards a few yards, someone moving fast had got me a good one in the gut. The someone disappeared, but not before I caught a whiff of the gentle scent of soap and herbs hanging around the attacker. I was so shocked I went limp and forgot to line up a landing. Don't think I have forgotten you, little one, the feminine voice of our tormentor said. There is no escape from this place. I heard Sasuke skid through a puddle on the ground just in time to throw up his arms and catch me, and we both tumbled over in a tangled heap as he was unable to absorb the shock of my fall. Idiot, he shouted, probably more out of fear and habit than any real urge to insult me. You moron, dobe. I wasn't listening. I was too busy staring sightlessly up in the vague direction of where I last knew our enemy to be. You. I gasped. The girl from the woods. What? Sasuke hissed sharply, oh, yeah, I hadn't told him about her, whoops, but the girl just chuckled. Was it just me, or did she sound sad? I am male, little one, she, no, he, said gently. But yes, I met you in the woods. My name is Haku. How did you recognize me? You smell, I grumbled, shoving Sasuke's arm off my midriff and clambering to my feet. What the hell is your deal? You seemed nice enough then. There was a long pause, before Haku answered softly. I am sorry, he said, his words heavy in the frigid air. I must end this now. My precious person is in danger. Forgive me. Sasuke gave a wordless shout, I was once again shoved aside, air whizzed as if something was slicing through it, like a kunai only much smaller, slicker, faster, several quiet think noises, of something sharp and slim striking flesh with a deadly accuracy, 
Sasuke's breath exploded from him in a surprised whoosh, leaving his lungs empty, and I strained to hear the gasp inwards that would refill them, only to panic when I couldn't. There was a much heavier thump, and my mind pieced together that Sasuke had collapsed, and then my world ended. Where Sasuke had been only a moment ago, there was nothing, just void void void, no heart thumping noisily in his chest, no breaths that he had learnt to quiet for me when I complained of his breathing keeping me up at nights, no movement I could hear. I could smell blood faintly through the mist, and felt my own heart stop, the darkness swirling around me, fire moving in my gut in response to my waning control. I stumbled a few steps and sank down on my knees with a low moan, for now forgetting that I was in a battle, for now forgetting that I was probably an inch from death myself, forgetting that Sensei and Sakura were still out there. Nothing else mattered right then. I buried my hands in Sasuke's shirt, fumbling a little as I underestimated where he was lying, feeling desperately for any sign of life. There was nothing. He was gone. With a whimper, I buried my face in his chest, vaguely aware of something thin and long pricking me at various spots, Senban, maybe? Had he been killed by a fucking needle? Haku was speaking. Is this the first time you have lost a comrade in battle, he asked gently. He probably said more, but I didn't hear it. There was a roaring in my ears, drowning him out. The pain in my chest, the knowledge that I'd lost my only link to the world too hard to accept, and I swam backwards, using the darkness as a blanket now to hide under, swathing myself in it. Sasuke hadn't just been my best friend, my brother. He'd been my eyes, my hope and my crutch. How was I going to keep limping on without him? In the back of my mind, further than I could retreat, I felt an angry presence pushing forward, and I turned into it blindly, fiery energy licking my face and hands, wanting it all, wanting the pain to just stop. The raging fire swirled and danced and spun tightly around me and the fury of the barely controlled storm shielded the silence. QB. I, I can't. QB. Don't. Let me handle this, little human. Then the feeling of an immense vehement inferno rushed through my very blood as I lost control. I have no idea what happened next, all I knew was a rush of fire, fire that burned but at the same time felt good, fire that drained away the anger, that filled me up and like a drug consumed me. It took away the ache in my chest, distracted me from it. When I next became aware, I was sitting on the bridge, the wind whistling around me, tugging at my hair. Not in the ice dome, then. Something was sticking to my skin, something liquid but viscous and tangy with a coppery smell hanging about it. It took me a moment to place the smell, and a wave of nausea flooded me when I realized that it was blood soaking my shirt through and drenching my arms, my chest, even dripping down my face from my hair. As far as I could tell, I was sitting in a pool of the stuff, but I wasn't injured at all, and Sasuke, he hadn't been hurt like this. As I thought the name of my best friend, my gut clenched horribly. Sasuke. Blindly, I began to cast about, trying to find some landmark, some indicator of where I was. I had to find him. I was on the bridge still, I was sure of that. There was no mistaking the sound of the ocean below, the feel of the slick wood beneath me. I stood carefully, testing every limb and muscle for damage before I trusted my weight to it, and looked around, my broken eyes mimicking a scanning glance out of sheer habit. I listened as hard as I could, no echoing whispers, no women screaming, no insults being thrown. I registered the sound of people, possibly a battle, a distance away, still on the bridge, and guessed that Sensei was there. If he was roughly where he had been before my blackout, I was too. Roughly. So all I had to do was find, dope. I froze. The word was tense, standoffish, with none of the usual warmth and affection attached to it, but there was no mistaking it. S. Sasuke. I stuttered, disbelieving. But you're dead. Haku killed you. Paralyzed me, Sasuke's voice came again, and this time I used it to begin the process of locating him, turning towards the noise and taking a tentative step forward. He was only a few meters away. Senban can, if used properly, 
induce a state that mimics death. Remember, Dobe. I paused, confused by the venom in his tone. What's wrong? I asked, bewildered. When he next spoke, I could tell from his tone that if I was close enough, if I touched his face I would find a wry twist on his lips. You don't know, do you, he said. You can't remember the last five, ten minutes, can you? I wanted to deny it, something in his tone warned me to deny it, but I couldn't lie, not to Sasuke. No, I admitted, taking a step towards my friend. You just went absolutely nuts, Sasuke growled. You were completely out of control. I bit my lip, stepping forwards again. A rustle of clothes indicated that Sasuke had stepped backwards, and hurt flashed through me. It must have shown on my face, because Sasuke sighed heavily and moved forwards again, sandals thumping softly on the wooden walkway. I felt his hand on my shoulder, a tentative, gentle force, and I choked on a sob and reached out to grab hold of him, the gravity of what had happened finally sinking in. For a long moment, Sasuke let me cling to him, even though he was probably disgusted with the blood passing from my body to his. I thought you had learned to avoid these. Insane moments, he said eventually. I took a shuddering breath and promptly hid in his shoulder. I lost control. I'm sorry, I said. I'm sorry. You were, Suk, you were dead and I just, I just, fuck, Suk, whose blood is this? What did I do? You didn't hurt anyone but the bastard trying to kill us, Sasuke assured me. Kakashi killed the other one, Zabuza. Then a bunch of losers turned up, but one look at you scattered them pretty well. I cringed. Sensei. Sakura. I whispered, very afraid of the answer. I felt the muscles through Sasuke's body twitch as he shrugged. Sensei looked like he noticed something. Sakura was dragging the bridge builder away, probably didn't see or sense anything, he said. Then, something gave, something softened, and he brought one arm up to hug me back roughly. I'm glad you're okay, he said, very quietly. Then, louder, you're really back in control now, right? I considered, shoving at the ever-present demon in my mindscape, making sure he was buried as well as I could manage, and nodded. Sasuke grunted. Good, he said. Keep it that way. Dobe. The word was what pushed me over the edge, suddenly, I was back to normal. I drew away from my friend and swept my hand over my eyes quickly, before grinning in his direction. Gone was the caustic sting behind the insult, returned was the affectionate meaning it usually held. Everything was okay between us. The stupid demon's stupid outing hadn't damaged anything. Team. Kakashi's log, we had our first large-scale fight today. Everyone did very well. Sakura protected the client, like the genin were all supposed to do, and I took on Zabuza. He is dead now. The boys scuffled with Zabuza's protege, a child by the name, according to Naruto, of Haku. Around the kid's age. He is dead. Two, but I didn't kill him. Neither boy will tell me what happened, but I know that Kyubi, or at least his chakra, was involved. I could sense it, the moment it appeared. For a moment, I was afraid Kyubi had been released. When I saw Naruto a few minutes later, I thought the demon had taken control. Naruto's eyes were bright red, and he looked. Feral, somehow. Animal. He killed Haku. After the fight, he was covered in blood, but seemed to have no notion of how it got there. He complained of being a little nauseous, but otherwise felt fine. He acted. Normal. Laughing, teasing Sasuke, nothing seemed to have changed. When I questioned him about the fight, he was able to explain in detail the first portion of his battle, until Sasuke was rendered unconscious. After that, he claims to have no memory of how the fight concluded or what happened to his enemy. I do not think he remembers his first kill. Kami, I hope I'm right. Sasuke was a little battered, but the battle was well worth it for him, as he has activated his Sharingan. 
I'll have to spend some time teaching him how to use it properly when we return home. Sasuke didn't seem to notice anything different or wrong with Naruto during the fight. Sakura was well out of a direct line of sight of Naruto, so she was none the wiser, but I have no way of knowing if Sasuke saw or sensed the demonic chakra or if he was unconscious the entire time. I will have to watch him and make sure he is pulled aside and either fed a part truth or a deflecting story if he shows any signs that he saw Naruto in his state of less than perfect control. Tomorrow we head home. I want to start Sakura on some chakra building exercises, she has good control, but abysmal stores. Kinda the polar opposite to Naruto, actually. I'm frightened for Naruto. If this gets to the council, there is no telling what they could do to Naruto. NB, have to forget to include it in my official report. If the seal is failing. NB, have Jiraiya check the seal over. If QB were to escape. NB, have Jiraiya check the seal over really, really well. I wonder what Minato Sensei would do. 9. Separation Attention, Sandame Hokage Memo, requesting three separate missions assigned instead of one. Required to test individual capabilities. Signed, Hataki Kakashi Attention, Hataki Kakashi Memo, request granted. See the mission's desk for possible assignments. No doubt you've already got something in mind. Signed, Sandame Hokage It was somewhat of a relief to be sitting with my back against the railing of the wooden bridge, the quiet rippling of the stream under the planks a soft whisper compared to the all-encompassing roar of the ocean. The bird calls fluttering through the wind were all familiar ones again, none of the unexpected keens and whoops that had ground on my nerves while we were away. It was good to be home. The rest of my team, minus our teacher, of course, was waiting in the morning sunshine, the light. Warm on my face as it cleared the ridge. I was a little bored, but listening to Sakura desperately trying to gather the courage to ask Sasuke out on a date was amusing. She'd managed to stammer her way through half an overture when Sensei appeared, and in the rush of air I nearly missed Sasuke's sigh of relief. Good morning. Kakusha Sensei chirped and I found myself mentally comparing his voice to the birds twittering in a shrub nearby. You're late, Sakura snarled, sounding furious at being interrupted. I shuffled into a deeper slouch, uninterested in our teacher's excuse, I heard something about a bookstore and immediately stopped listening. They were well known, our teacher's bad reading habits. I started listening when Sasuke's foot tapped my railing. I don't know what I'd do without him, he was always the one who kicked me awake in class. Wave had been far too close. I have never understood your propensity for dwelling on what could have been. It did not happen. Cease considering it. I didn't have time to spare the suggestion more than an eye roll before all my attention focused on what my teacher was saying. Sakura, you're going to be helping out at the hospital today, the boys are working on something else, so you'll have to have a quick talk to the head doctor to get an idea of what they need you for. She made a startled sound of protest, and Sensei, I swear he gets weirder every day, said, Shu. Shu Shu. I couldn't help choking with laughter, and nearly fell off the bridge as Sakura walked hesitantly away, pausing every few seconds like she wasn't sure if she'd get called back or not. Sasuke's hand on my collar stopped me from getting extremely wet. Che. You're such an idiot. Be more careful. Already Sakura's absence was obvious, a combination of the loss of her now familiar chakra and the quiet following her usual racket. So what cha want us for, sensei? I asked cheerfully. Boysenly mission or something? Or something, sensei agreed in a too light voice, and I sat up a bit straighter, suspicious. What kind of something? Sasuke asked from above me, moving a little closer. The fun kind, of course. Crap, we chorused gloomily. Kakashi didn't seem to notice our distinct lack of enthusiasm, if he did, he was doing a very good job of ignoring it. Sasuke, the mother of the Hanasaki triplets wants to go to the markets today without the children, you need to watch the three of them for a few hours. I shuddered, and stood up, dusting myself off. The Hanasaki triplets were little brats, 
although at the very least it was unlikely to turn into another wave. A resigned HN from Sasuke gave his agreement to that thought, at least it's not wave, and I stifled a grin, turning towards the Conahan streets. I didn't get far. Now, Naruto, where are you off to? Kakusha Sensei asked lightly, and I froze, a ball of ice forming in my stomach. Sasuke had stopped moving too, and he stepped a little closer to me. No matter. What Sensei threw at us, we knew there was safety in numbers. Sensei shifted, and there was the dry rustle of paper on paper. Naruto, you need to run messages to a few people. He passed me a handful of envelopes, three of which I promptly dropped, still not fully comprehending what he was asking of us. But. Sensei. I said slowly, collecting the envelopes that had escaped. He ignored me entirely. Well, you both have your assignments. Hop to it, that he was splitting us up. Come on, no time to waste, he urged, clapping a hand on my shoulder and making me flinch as he pushed me away from my friend. Your messages are getting cold, Sasuke's charges are escaping. I twisted around in his grip instantly, trying to check on the Uchiha, and was shoved firmly in the back, making me stumble and nearly drop the letters again. Come on, Naruto, get moving, he said sternly. I glared in his direction before breaking into a trot. The sooner I started, the sooner I'd finish. My heart was thundering in my ears, blood pulsing disturbingly in the fingers clenched around the paper notes, and I realized dimly that I was shaking a split second before I tripped over the curb. Okay, I need to calm down, I thought, gasping for air. Sasuke might be stuck on his own with the triplets of doom, but I have got absolutely no reason to panic. Oh, what the hell am I doing? Who the hell are these letters for, anyway? Damn sensei, he's probably trying to save on postage. It took me several seconds, and more than one pass of my sensitive fingers, to decipher Kakusha sensei's calligraphy, Mado Guy. Isn't that? On ye, Squad 9's teacher, I remember now. I shuddered again, and then sighed. The easiest way to find him would be to listen. Like I'd told my team on that weird blindfolded mission, Rock Lee was bad, his teacher was worse. Tracking him down was far from hard, although as I fumbled through the trees, I know this area, damn it. I felt a stabbing pain developing in my head, spreading from my eardrums. For heaven's sake. Why is he so noisy? He was running Squad 9 through a series of numbered drills. I had no idea what said drills entailed, but currently they were running laps as their teacher gave a speech on hard work and the flames of youth. I revised my opinion of Kakusha Sensei slightly. He was weird, but at least not clinically so like this nutcase. Mato Sensei. I called to get his attention, only to cringe and cover my ears as he turned towards me. Good morning, young shinobi. You are one of my eternal rival Kakashi's students, are you not? How may I help you this fine morning? My eyes were watering, despite my attempt at protection, a driving ache rang straight through my ears and drove twin spikes of pain through either side of my head. It took me a few seconds to swallow the agonized wine in the back of my throat to choke out, please, Mato Sensei, not so, not so loud, it hurts. I tried for an apologetic grin. My apologies. Young Jenin. I was relieved to hear a normal volume of voice from him, and cautiously pried my hands from my ears, swiping surreptitiously at my eyes. I am most sorry that my voice was causing you pain, he continued seriously. Such behavior is most unyouthful. My headache was fading already, and I managed a better imitation of a smile this time. It's, it's okay, sir. It's just me, Sensei says my hearing's hypersensitive, so loud noises really hurt. I would still apologize for causing you pain. It was not my intention. Now, for what do you require my assistance? I sighed quietly, so many big words, and explained, Sensei has me running messages, and your name was the first one I could read. I held out the paper envelope, the paper almost sleek against my fingers in a way envelopes usually weren't. 
handmade or just good quality. Thank you, young shinobi, Guy said seriously as he took the letter, and I relaxed minutely, putting both hands back on my little pile. I can see you have other duties to complete, so I will keep you no longer, young shinobi. Good luck on your quest for my eternal rival Kakashi. He'd started getting a bit loud at the end, making me thankful I'd been backing away the whole time. I bobbed my head in a quick bow, trying for respectful, before escaping back into the forest, the sound of guys shouting starting up again as he encouraged his genin. Okay, one down. That wasn't so bad. I could do this. I could do this. Ow, I grumbled, rubbing my cheek from where I had just walked into a tree. Okay, next envelope. What the hell does this say? Sensei's handwriting was still nearly impossible to decipher, seriously, I will never again complain about textbooks, but I managed to figure it out eventually. At least, I hoped I had. Um. Inazuka Tsum. Kiba's mom, right? I frowned to myself, stumbling inelegantly over a tree root and swearing crossly as I trotted back towards town. She'd be at the clan compound, right? Unless she's on a mission or something. I felt a flash of worry, would I have to hover around with her letter until she showed up again? It was bad security to just leave a message floating around, but shoved it aside. I'd deal with that if and when it came to it. Even outside the high stone and chain-link walls, it was all too easy to smell that this was distinctly dog territory, and it made the hair on the back of my neck prickle. The weight at the back of my mind shifted, and flickered, but didn't come forward. The noise inside of the dog's barking was near about deafening, the Inazuka and me have never really gotten along. I totally blame the furball. It was fairly easy to get someone's attention, with the dogs going mad, it was fairly obvious there was someone at the gates, and only a little harder to convince the grumpy-sounding Chunin I got hold of that I'd only give the message to Tsum herself. The matriarch of the Inazuka clan wasn't as bad as some people seemed to think, eh? Little rough around the edges, sure, but that was the whole clan in a nutshell. She didn't like me much, I knew, but she didn't actively dislike me either. The message was met with a grunt and a gruff, now scram, already. The dogs were giving me a headache, so I was all too happy to scram. The next name I managed to translate was one I only knew vaguely, Hagen Kotetsu. I think he's usually on desk duty or something. What's his buddy's name? Izumo. Maybe he'll be at the mission desk. He wasn't, but the Chunin who was organizing the forms for what sounded like a potential Brank mission told me the pair was on duty at the south gate again, which at least meant I had no trouble finding them. From there, Kotetsu was an easy question away, and I was down a third envelope. Tell Kakashi I think he's a bastard for sending a genin around with these messages, Kotetsu said breezily, handing me a slip of smooth scrap paper as I turned to go back into the village. Great. Delegated to Messenger Bird. That's a great way to feel needed. Next translatable name on the list is. Asuma Sensei, from Squad 10. Okay, I know for sure that they're in village somewhere, because if they weren't, Sakura would have complained about Ino's team getting to leave the village for a mission before us this morning instead of trying to ask Sasuke out. Heh, sucks to be him. Which training ground does Team 10 use? I couldn't remember, but then again, my team tended to bounce around whatever was available anyway. Unless Asuma Sensei was much more organized than Kakusha Sensei, the same thing was probably happening for them. I eventually tracked them down pretty much next to the academy, I hadn't even known there was a training ground that close. The difference between Shikamaru's team and Guy's, or even my own, for that matter, was a marked decrease in noise levels. Chuji was munching on an ever-present bag of chips and doing something with his chakra that I couldn't describe, while Ino was lounging against a nearby tree. I had no idea what she was doing. Shikamaru and the target of my search were sitting on the grass, from the occasional soft, clacks, of wood on wood, they were playing either Shugi or Go. Asuma Sensei. I eventually piped up to get his attention, 
when it seemed he was too focused on the game to acknowledge the human-sized messenger bird hovering a few feet away. I have a message from Kakashisensei. H.M. Oh, thank you, Naruto, he said distractedly, taking the note with one hand and moving a piece with the other. Shikamura just paused for a few seconds, thinking out his next move, and then clack a Danather piece into place. Asuma grumbled something under his breath, and the paper rustled. I envy you, Shikamaru, I commented, waiting for the return message Asuma Sensei was scratching out with a pen. Your team is so much quieter than mine. I winced as Ino suddenly barked something at Chuji, and Shikamaru shifted his weight. I don't see how yours. Could be much worse, he drawled. I have Ino. I grinned. I have Sakura and the person she likes to squeal over. Trust me, you got it easy. Thanks, Naruto. Asuma handed me another little folded slip of paper. Take this back to Kakashi for me, would you? He moved another piece, then swore under his breath at Shika's counter. I grinned again and shuffled my envelopes, looking for the next readable one. Yamanaka Inoichi. Wow, I guess it's true that ninja run in families. Hey, Ino, would you happen to know where your dad is today? I said aloud, tipping my head to look at the girl absently. Ino shifted on the grass, probably a little startled at being addressed. He's either at Shikamaru's, or at work, she replied eventually. Okay, where's work? I pressed. This time of day he probably wouldn't be at Shika's house yet. If he wasn't at work, then I knew where the Nara house was. Ino shrugged. The T and I department. I don't know where it is, though. Oh, that's okay, I know. I nodded cheerfully and ran off, wanting to just get this stupid mission over with. What, exactly, is in these notes, that they're being sent to torture and intelligence? Suddenly I'm a little worried. Finding T and I was, like I told Eno, quite easy. Okay, so it would be hard to find for most people, but, well. Actually, I have no idea why I know where it is. It's sure as hell not a place I frequent. Wait. Takini I used to get sent here a lot. Me and Sasuke followed him at least once. Against explicit orders, of course, but he must have known we were there. Arg. This thinking is making my head hurt. Where the hell is the door? Getting in was a whole other story. I had to stand through three pat-downs, a chakra check, and two intentions checks. Mind you, the receptionist sounded nearly as bored and annoyed as I did, which made me feel a little more vindicated in being pissed off by the procedure. Plus, the receptionist, no doubt eager to be rid of the annoying Jenin who wasn't even a threat, was all too happy to point me towards Eno's dad, who was working through a pile of reports when I knocked. Messenger, I explained, trying not to sound too exasperated. He mumbled something in response as he read Kakashi Sensei's letter, writing furiously with the hand not holding the paper and his mind clearly on something else. Thanks, was mumbled distractedly and I scarpered, make a silent vow to never get conned into a desk job. They looked like utter hell. Even the mission desk had to be better than that. I checked the envelopes I still held, the paper slightly crumpled from being clutched for so long. Okay, and this next one is. Um. Shiranui. Jerima. Man, Sensei's handwriting is really bad. Wait, no, no, I think it's Genma. Who the hell is that? I couldn't recall ever meeting or hearing of someone by the name, but since I still wasn't entirely sure whether or not I was reading it right, I decided to just skip it and flip the envelope to the back of the considerably diminished pile. There were only two other messages, and I eyed one of them with considerable trepidation. I didn't know much about Yuhi Kurinai, except that she was a Jinjutsu master, one of the newer Jounin, and the third Junin Sensei for this year. Hey! Wasn't that Niji dude's cousin in this team? However, Hinata was infinitely less annoying than Niji, or Sakura, 
come to think of it, and the wild card Kiba was apparently having a staring contest with Shino's sunglasses. Hey! That's just what I picked up from Kurinai telling Hinata not to worry, that Kiba wasn't actually going to attack him, and that Shino was probably asleep. It wasn't like I had any visual cues to help. Um, you his NCI? I asked, feeling oddly shy. Hmm. She moved, a kind of loose grace in her chakra that caught my attention briefly. Yes, Naruto. Has Kakashi forgotten about the messenger bird system again, she added kindly. I grinned sheepishly in response and dropped my eyes, Genjutsu users tended to be a lot more observant than their counterparts, and offered her the letter, then waited in semi-awkward silence as she made an odd noise, or maybe it was Hinata squeaking like that, and quickly penned a reply. Would you mind taking this back to Kakashi for me, she asked, not actually handing me the paper until I nodded. Man women are weird. All the other people just shoved their replies at me and ordered me to take M back. Kiba and Shino hadn't moved the whole time I was there, and I had the sneaking suspicion that Hinata had been on the verge of fainting, again. Seriously, she must be anemic or something, happens all the time. In spite of all this, I came away with the odd feeling that Squad 8 was the most normal of our year. The only other envelope I had happily proclaimed Ibiki, in Sensei's appalling calligraphy, and I groaned. Wonderful. Back to T and I, I guess. This time the receptionist took one look at me and my pathetic handful of envelopes and waved me through, mumbling something uncomplimentary under his breath. I couldn't help but roll my eyes, wondering if they had any other form of checking who people are other than that first check, because otherwise that guy just let a potential security risk into a place that handles a lot of dangerous prisoners and intelligence. Okay, Ibiki, Ibiki, I really hope he's not on shift at the moment. I mumbled, shuddering at the thought of the smell of the lower sections. Not that I'd ever been down there, but I'd been around enough people who worked there to know the smell that clung to them had to be a hundred times worse. The too familiar weight in the back of my mind perked up a little at the remembered stench of terror and pain, and I shoved it back with an eye roll. It took me nearly ten minutes to track down the head of TNI, and a further twenty to actually find the office he was, apparently, doing paperwork in. I heard very little ink or pen scratching when I went in, as opposed to Inoichi. Message from Kakashi Sensei, I announced in a bored tone, all too happy to hand over the second to last note on my pile, leaving me with the one I either didn't know or couldn't read. As Ibiki pocketed his note with a rustle of paper and cloth, I had a flash of inspiration, fingering the unintelligible note. Since I'm down here, would you happen to know who Shiranui Genma is? I asked hopefully, and got a grunt that could have constituted either surprise or derision. Yeah, I know him. Oh yes. But not where he is, he was quick to add, some of my elation must have shown a bit too clearly. Sorry, kid. He sounded more amused than sorry, and I left the creepy HQ for the second time that day, with no idea where to find him, but at least fairly sure that Genma existed. I spent hours trekking over the village looking for Genma, but everyone I asked either ignored me, didn't know who he was, or didn't know where he was. Honestly, Ibiki had been the most helpful, and when the head of torture is being the most helpful you know there's something up. My head ached, and I had no idea why the furball wasn't fixing whatever the hell the problem was, which only made me grumpier. Eventually, I gave up on ever finding this Genma character and stormed back to the Little Red Bridge, intending to just throw the damn letter in the stream if Sensei wasn't there. Fortunately for village security, my teacher was leaning against the railings lazily, and I heard him shift, probably to look at me, as I got closer, and I scowled at him. How did you go, Naruto? Who the hell is Genma? I snapped by way of reply, my temper made worse by the unmitigated thudding of my head. I've been all over the damn village and I can't find the guy, so if it's really that important, take the damn letter to him yourself. For all I know you just made him up to annoy me. Hey, said another voice, belonging to the other person I had sensed on the bridge, his chakra was vaguely familiar, but clearly not someone's I actually knew, 
so I had ignored him up until now. Kakashi Sensei was grinning, I just knew it. Naruto, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, Shiranui Genma. Be nice to him, he just got in from a mission. Genma, this is Naruto, one of my genin. He's been delivering messages today. Speaking of, I grumbled, thrusting the last envelope at this Genma dude. Take the damn thing. And you get these. I turned and shoved the return messages I had picked up at my teacher, who started to go through them leisurely. Oh, what did you get? Genma asked, his voice laughing. Note from Asuma, note from Kotetsu, challenge from Guy, paper bomb. Naruto. How did that get in there? I didn't remember Guy giving me anything to take back. Dot but, assassination attempts aside, nothing interesting, my teacher finished, hand going out to pat my shoulder absently. The unexpected contact made me flinch. A job well done, eh, Naruto. You're the first one. Finished, too. I stared at him flatly, too tired to make an effort to hide the blankness in my eyes with a smile. Can I go home yet? Kakashi's log Sakura did well at the hospital. Separated from Sasuke and other influences from her age group, she did better than I'd expected. This kind of arrangement could be beneficial for her. It certainly would be wise to get her some medical training, the people I've spoken with have confirmed she has potential for it. Sasuke wasn't as focused as I thought he would be. He kept losing one of the triplets, and seemed to have trouble getting him back. He also seemed to be very upset with me by the end of the day, though I'm not entirely sure why. Naruto did all right with messages, see attached replies, Ibiki was zero help, told me to do my own job and let him do his, but he was in an appalling mood by the end of it, it seems he had trouble with my handwriting. He was also a bit scratched up, and horribly jumpy. Something in the way he looked at Genma and me. Dot no. That can't be right. I can't believe it. I won't believe it. Dot maybe. Ah. Naruto, what happened to you? Sakura screamed. Naruto, you're on fire again, said Sasuke, sounding bored. I thought I could smell smoke. I grumbled. I've been searching for the damn fire all the way here. Where the heck is it? Left sleeve. I started beating it out immediately. Thank you. Stupid shock tag backfired on me halfway through and blew up a lamp. Scared the crap out of the neighbor's cat. You do look slightly charred, Sasuke agreed, obviously amused. I thought you had the shock tags working. I do, actually, the paper I was using was contaminated, I explained. I'm not sure what the problem was, but it didn't feel quite right. Last time I ignore my gut screaming, danger. Danger. Abort and run for life. I swear, it's a health hazard, ignoring your instincts. I was working on one of my poison tags last night, maybe that had something to do with it. Sasuke snorted faintly. Whatever you like, Naruto. But you were going to work on your flip some more while we're waiting for Kakashi Sensei to show, remember? Oh yeah. I stretched carefully, before springing into a backflip, landing on my hands, and pushing off again to land on my feet. Sasuke grunted noncommittally. No, you're still off-center. Geez, can't you do anything right? Team, I grumbled, this is harder than it looks. You're still pushing too hard with your right hand and leg, it's turning you a little, the Uchiha reported, sounding smug and nonchalant to anyone's ears but mine. My ears heard the patience and encouragement he was communicating, no one seemed to have deciphered our private language. Sasukiken is right, Naruto, Sakura added. You really need to practice. Yeah, well, I am right-handed, I muttered under my breath, trying the maneuver again and stumbling slightly at an unknown terrain change. Stupid rocks. Today, with Sasuke helping me, I was trying to work on a particular style of backflip that I had been having trouble with. Apparently most ninja couldn't see what they were doing with this flip anyway, but they, unlike me, could see vaguely where the ground was. 
I had landed on my head more times than I cared to count in the past week. On the plus side, I was starting to learn the sort of passive reflection of chakra that was the ground that would have helped when I was learning tree climbing. A poofing sound and a sliver of chakra shaped into a shunshin signal caught me off guard halfway through another flip, and I curled up a little and went into a side roll so as not to crack my head against the ground. I had discovered that already to be not fun. You're late. Sakura yelled at our teacher, who was probably reading his stupid book again. You know, I'm starting to think he's always late, I said, very sarcastically, propping myself up on my elbows where I was lying on my stomach. Yes, I've noticed that too, Sasuke agreed, also sarcastic. Maybe it's not just a one-time thing. Hmm, it does seem to be a bit of a habit, doesn't it? I think so, seeing as he's never been known to be on time before. Well, not since he was an ANBU, anyway, I mused, before realizing I shouldn't know that. Oh damn. Hey, where had I picked that tidbit up from, anyway? I hadn't had the time to steal Kakashi's files yet. Eh. Not a mystery I could be bothered to solve. Kakashi Sensei seemed happier than usual today. You're all dismissed for the day, he said cheerfully, and left. I stared at the last spot I'd heard his voice, mouth twitching. He kept us waiting for that. You know, the hunt down Sensei and kill him plan is looking better every day, Sasuke muttered under his breath. I vote we break into his apartment and set his bookcase on fire. Sasuke chuckled tiredly, both of us were ignoring Sakura, who was yelling at a teacher who wasn't present. We didn't try to interrupt her, the mission to wave had taught us some respect for female moodiness. We can't do that, Naruto, he's a jounin in our teacher. Plus there's probably something to do with morality in there. Oh, by the way, our sensei said brightly, reappearing suddenly, and nearly giving all three of us coronaries, I need to talk to you three tomorrow, so meet me at the Red Bridge at 5 a.m., bright and early. Don't be late. Then he was gone again. There was a pause. I'll bring the matches, Sasuke growled. All three of us chuckled slightly at that notion. Well, what should we do now? Sasuke asked, then automatically cringed as he recognized what he had said. Fortunately, he was saved from a fangirl attack by a scream about a block away from us. Before we even realized what was going on all three of us were sprinting. As we shot down the street Sasuke muttered, two unfamiliar ninja, Suna from their hitayats, one's holding a kid by a scarf, eight years old give or take, one ninja in black, male, mummy-like. Contraption strapped to his back, second one is female, blonde-haired, looks bored, looks dangerous. I nodded my thanks, matching the three voices and chakra essences I could hear and sense to the descriptions, noting a fourth further off, before declaring, loudly, H-E-Y. What do you think you're doing? If three kids dashing down the street hadn't gotten their attention, that had. Well well well, the male sneered, what do we have here? More Conahan brats. The girl, young woman, more like, sighed. Kankuro, we're not here to make trouble. Put the brat down and let's go. You know Gara won't be pleased if you cause a fuss. But Tamari, he ran into me. And Gar is not even here yet. The kid made a choking sound, and I literally felt my face hardening. Put him down, I ordered, my voice quieter than usual but with twice the force. You're on Kanoha ground, attacking our people, Sasuke remarked from my left. The kid didn't hurt you, so quit looking for trouble, Sakura added, with a tiny spike of killer intent. I snorted slightly, the action perfectly silent. You're here for the exams, not to cause a diplomatic incident that could take years of paperwork to clear up. Now put, him, down. There was an almost soundless growl from the Suna ninja called Kankuro, and I stared at the spot I could guess his face to be with a stone mask, not glaring, but letting him know that I, and the rest of my team, meant business. And you can come down from there, I called sharply to a tree, the one with a set of vital signs and an unfamiliar chakra sitting on a high branch. I know you're hiding up there. There was the chakra flash of a shun shin, 
the sensation a little different to a Konohan Shunshin, and the ninja in the tree reappeared much closer by and on ground level. Kankuro, he said, his voice a cold growl. We didn't come here to make trouble. Put him down or I'll kill you. His voice was totally matter-of-fact. I almost raised an eyebrow at the sudden fear scent flooding my nostrils at the third nin's appearance in the street. Apparently the other two hadn't known he was there, and were very scared of him. With a slight rustle of clothing, he seemed to turn slightly towards us and said, I am sorry for their behavior. Then his clothes rustled again as he turned away. The other boy, Kankuro, set the kid down and the little one ran away instantly, his chakra form immediately rejoining with two others before all three fled. Gara. You see, what happened was, they started it, the kid, he, shut up. Right. Sorry, Gara. I was totally out of line. Sorry. I was probably frowning slightly, doing a full scan of the three's unshielded chakra. It was slightly harsher than average Kanoha chakra, probably from the desert environment they hailed from. It made sense that chakra forms differed from place to place. Zabuza and Haku's chakra had felt a little different, too. More fluid, though I hadn't really noticed it at the time. The third ninja, the one they called Gara, his chakra was something else entirely. It was thicker, coarser, more bloody and hateful. Almost like the chakra of the demon fox Kyubi. Who are you? I voiced aloud, even though they had already started walking away. Their soft footsteps halted, and at least one of them turned around to look at me. Sabaka no Gara, of Suna, the boy with the demonic chakra abruptly voiced. There was a short pause of maybe a heartbeat. Who are you? Uchiha Sasuke, my dark friend said coolly. This is Uzumaki Naruto. There was a pause before he realized the third member of our team was here. That is Haruno Sakura. Without another word, the three Suna Shinobi vanished. Instantly, Sasuke rounded on me. What exams? When did you hear about them? When were you planning on telling me about them? Calm down, I told him awkwardly, scratching my head. I only heard about them a little while ago, from the sensei of Team 9. Right, and when did you last come into contact with him, my friend asked dryly. I haven't. I can just hear him shouting about them. I still hear him shouting about them, I added, twitching as a particularly loud bellow reached my ears. How can you guys not hear that? Naruto, remember, your ears are hypersensitive, Sakura informed me. Ours are normal. We just hear the normal stuff, whereas you can hear a Jounin sensei from two kilometers away. Uh, point of interest, I wouldn't class Mato guy's stealth as being Jounin level. Think Rock Lee, with adult lungs. I shuddered slightly at the thought. At this stage I think about a quarter of the village knows about the Chunin exams from him alone. Chunin exams? Sakura asked with interest. I didn't know they were coming up. The Jounin have been trying to keep it under wraps from the annoying Genin population who will demand to be nominated, I explained. The tests begin next week, though, so ninja from other countries are starting to pour in. Even if they haven't heard Guy yet, every Genin in Kanoha will know about the exams one way or another. Finally, Kakashi Sensei. I exclaimed the next morning at approximately 8 o'clock. I thought you were never gonna tell us. Kakashi seemed confused by that. What do you mean, Naruto? What would give you the idea I wouldn't tell you? Where did you hear about them before, anyway? I, and most of the village, heard it from Guy, I informed him. I managed to filter it out through some babble about the flames of youth and sparring. Figured you couldn't be bothered to tell us about them until the last second to warn us where not to go. Kakashi Sensei gave a definite shudder, one that I noted down as an unusual reaction in Kakashi's mental file, how well did he know Guy? That message last week, what had that been about? Of course I would tell you three about the exams you're entered in. There was a pause before my horrified brain managed to reboot. You what? 
I nominated you three for the Chunin exams, Kakashisensei repeated calmly. Even if you don't pass, it will be a good learning experience for the three of you. Here are the forms, fill them out and take them to the academy, room 301 on the third floor on the day of the exam. The exam is in one week. Good luck. Poof. I really am gonna kill him someday. Hey, I hope Sakura shows up, I announced suddenly as we, we being me and Sasuke, stood in front of the academy where the first test was being held. There was a crowd of genin from every country, their nationality identified by Sasuke's descriptions and my knowledge of village insignia, except Yuki, which I made a mental note to check up on later, hovering around the doors and fighting to get through. Why? Sasuke wanted to know, keeping two fingers on my wrist to let me know he was still there even through the raucous din the ninja were making. It's totally optional and we'd probably do better without her. Actually, all three team members need to be present to even get inside, I informed him, voice low. Before this mob got here I heard a pair trying to force their way in, but they weren't allowed. If Sakura's not here, we won't be entering the exam after all. Sasuke grunted, sounding resigned. Hey, guys, Sasukakan, Naruto, came Sakura's light voice from behind us, carefully quiet. I smiled slightly in thanks that she had listened to the explanation of her loud voice hurting my sensitive ears and nodded in greeting. When did you guys get here? About two hours ago, I informed her. I wanted to scout out the competition without having to watch my back too much. There's a lot of talent here, and a lot of no-hopers, too. I can't help but wonder how some of them even made Jenin, they're more cannon fodder than Chunin material. Come on, let's go, Sasuke said flatly, pushing himself off the tree he'd been leaning on and gently tugging at my orange jacket to let me know we were going. I followed him easily through the crowd, having gotten much better at focusing on an individual's pattern than I had been before Wave, weaving around the scrambling genin. I only lost Sasuke once in the mass of sounds and smells, and I quickly found him again, less concerned by the loss of my reference point. Okay so it still freaked me out. Just not to the point of mental breakdown. We managed to fight our way through the crowd and bolted up the stairs, where another crowd was hovering around a door on the second floor. Why they were so interested in a door I remembered to be the broom closet was beyond me, but I ignored it and made to go up the next flight only to get yanked back by Sakura. Naruto, where are you going, you idiot? To the third floor, I said blankly. But this is the third floor, Sakura insisted, thankfully still quietly. That door there, it's room 301, Naruto. Are you blind or something? I felt Sasuke twitch. Sakura, this is only the second floor, I told her. We need to go up another floor first. That's just a genjutsu, Sasuke added under his breath, and I realized the door had been hinged or similar. Those two chunin must have set it up, I mused. What two chunin? Sakura and Sasuke both asked. The two guarding the door, I returned, just as confused as they were. No way does that chakra belong to Jenin. My sensing had been getting better and better since the emergency crash course in Wave, I could sense power levels now, too, and I was starting to get a feel for the slippery shadowy anonymity that indicated a shield, the void that had baffled me when we were fighting Zabuza. Another genjutsu, Sasuke realized, and I shook my head silently. Most genjutsu didn't affect me, but they still affected the people around me. I needed to work on my sensing abilities for genjutsu or my friends could get in trouble and I'd never know. I listened to the sounds of a brawl starting and smirked slightly, shaking my head. Leave the silly genin to their fights, and the silly chunin to their amusement. Come on, guys, let's move. As we walked upstairs, my ears caught a conversation somewhere further off, a room upstairs, I suspected. Putting one hand on Sasuke's arm so I wouldn't get lost, I focused in on it. I need to go and do a last scan on the forest of death, said a female voice I vaguely recognized as a Kanoha Jounin. You have fun torturing the genin with intel gathering, Ibiki. 
I will, I will, said a male voice, the head of interrogation, if I remembered right. What the heck was Ibiki doing here? It's so amusing, watching them figure out they don't need knowledge, and then fail to do anything useful about it. And they wonder why making Chunin is so difficult. What's the last question this year? the woman asked, sounding interested. The voices were fading, they were moving away from me, out of my range. The door die, pass or fail, sink or swim question. Risk and pass, or take no chances and fail, was the quiet reply, before they faded entirely. I blinked and stumbled over the last step as I came back to my team. I laughed slightly, then realized Kakusha Sensei was standing idly outside the door to room 301. Hey, Kakusha Sensei, I said, vaguely surprised. What are you doing here? I thought you already passed the Chunin exam. I sensed a glare being shot my way and smiled innocently. The book was shut with a snap, and Kakusha Sensei said, I wanted to be here to make sure all three of you came. We already know that we need everyone here. I interrupted before he could tell us something I already knew. Ichem. Well then. Good luck to all three of you, he said brightly. We have such a weird teacher, Sakura sighed, moving towards the closed door, I could hear more people behind it. I went to follow her, then paused and bit my lip. Should I tell them what I overheard? Or would that count as cheating? But we were ninja, playing fair is four. Samurai. Any advantage we had should be exploited. And I shouldn't hold such an advantage from my team. My hearing was one of the few advantages we'd be able to get, the other genin would have years worth of experience on their sides. Hey, guys. I said, making them both pause to look at me. In this exam. It's information gathering, not knowledge. Don't be fooled. And the last question is a risk-taking thing, risk and pass, take the safe option and fail. I stopped and scratched the back of my head sheepishly at their no doubt questioning looks. Just. Something I picked up. It wouldn't be nice to not share it. Sasuke breathed out faintly. Thanks, Naruto, that could be useful, he said. Let's show them what we're made of. I grinned and trotted up to him and we moved towards the door as Team 7. When did you hear that? Sasuke muttered into my ear. Like, two minutes ago. I whispered back. I think it was the proctors talking. He nodded, and opened the door. The sudden flare of killer intent was rather impressive for a bunch of genin, and I raised both eyebrows. Wow, hostile much? Hey, you made it came the boisterous shout from somewhere to our right, and I smelled the unmistakable odor of Kiba and Akameru, plus the rest of their team. I grinned at them, and then dodged to the side to avoid a flying body. Sasukakin. Ino shouted as she latched onto her crush. Did you miss me? It must have been so horrible, being stuck with forehead girl on your team. Inapig, get off Sasukakin. Sakura shot back. It's. Touching. Me. Sasuke whimpered. You was, I muttered at him. How troublesome. Hi, Shikamaru, I said, ignoring the shouting match that had broken out behind me and Sasuke yelping that he was going to be torn in two if they didn't let him go. Oh, for Kami's sake, Sasuke, are you a ninja or not? Do a kawarimi. He did very promptly leaving the two fangirls to drop the tree branch he had substituted with and continue arguing. So, Shika, how's life? Hey, Naruto, I haven't seen you in ages. Kiba shouted, right next to my ear. I winced and listened half-heartedly to his happy boasting, not really caring once the volume dropped a little. It was nice to know he hadn't even noticed me delivering a message to his teacher. Hey, hey, it looks like the whole Rookie 9 is here this year. Team 7, Team 8, and Team 10. Damn. Went up again. I made a show of glancing around as I matched the six other chakra patterns and sense to my memory before nodding. It looks that way. Wonder how long it'll last. Hey, 
Are you saying we're not gonna make it through this? Would you rookies mind putting a lid on it? I whipped around and fought the urge to snarl at the newcomer, I'd sensed his chakra around the village, but I didn't know him personally. Everyone's on edge, and you guys are making such a racket that some tempers are bound to go off. You're the rookie nine, aren't you? I'd advise you. Keep your heads down and not make trouble for yourselves. And who are you, anyway? Kiba asked loudly. Me? Oh, I'm Yakushi Kabuto, came the easy reply, Kabuto had a friendly voice, but there was something in it that I really didn't like. I've spent most of my life listening to people talking and understanding more from what they didn't say or how they said it. A lot of people talk to me in false kind voices, so I've picked up exactly how to tell what their real intentions are. I read voices better than most people read faces, and I didn't like how Kabuto spoke. Sure, it was friendly enough, open, light-hearted, but there was a sarcastic tinge to it. A taunting smugness that just screamed at my instincts that something was wrong. A condescending tone in his sheepish chuckle as he admitted to failing the exam seven times, seven, that's sad. I passed the Genin exam on my third and a half go, so how bad must he be? I narrowed my eyes slightly, backing away a little, before turning around altogether and walking away. Sasuke followed me instantly, and Sakura came after us too, while the other six rookies stayed, not noticing our departure to the other side of the room. I don't like Kabuto, I told them flat out once we were out of hearing range. There's something wrong in his voice, his attitude, stay away from him and his teammates, and don't trust them. Leaf or no, Kabuto is not on our side for this exam. I had no idea how right I was. I just thought he was plotting an ambush, an easy pass for his team later on. I think it was after this that I started to get really paranoid. A door at the bottom of the hall slammed open, and I glanced at it, instantly recognizing two of the chakra signatures as Jounin, and three more as Chunin, two of them the signals that had been guarding the second floor door. Shut up, you miserable tadpoles, shouted the voice I had previously identified as the head of interrogation, and I grinned, knowing this exam was going to be funny as hell. Anyone not in a chair in four seconds is disqualified and their team with them. There was a flurry of activity as everyone scrambled for seats, me, Sasuke and Sakura instantly springing for the bench nearest us. Once all was quiet and one unlucky team was chased out for being too slow, complaining the whole way, the man at the front shouted, My name is Marino Ibiki, and I am your proctor for the first part of this Chunin exam. My word is law, so if I say you're disqualified at any point, get lost. This is going to be a written exam, he actually laughed at the groans of despair and or horror. Yes, a written exam, you miserable worms. Come down here and hand over your entry forms in exchange for a number and your exam. Sit where the number indicates, and then shut the hell up. I stood up calmly and walked down to the front, where people were already lining up to get their papers and numbers. Following Sasuke, I stood patiently on the end of the line. Swapped my registration for an exam and a pencil, and then read my number, brushing my fingers over the engraved wooden button. Having brushed my hand over several desks as I walked down, I understood the numbering system in the room, hazarded a guess as to my position, walked over and checked it. Bingo! I am so cool! I sat down and scanned the room's chakra essences, finding Sasuke two rows behind me and Sakura closer to the front. The rest of the rookie nine was scattered around, along with plenty of unfamiliar chakras as well. Most of them felt extremely nervous. When did I develop the ability to sense emotion through chakra? That was a new one. Had it happened gradually, or had I had a breakthrough? Filing the whole deal away for investigation later, I tuned back in, and I suspected that the sadistic Jounin up the front was grinning. Now that we're all ready for this, I'll explain the rules. There are ten questions on this exam, and the marking system is a little different to what you're used to. Instead of being awarded points, you begin with ten points. For every question you get wrong, a point is deducted from your overall score. If you get caught cheating, then two points will be taken from your score. 
If you cheat five times and get caught then you will be disqualified. If any member of your team gets a score of zero, then the entire team fails. There was a definite groan as that rule was announced, and I frowned. This was information gathering, I knew that already. So we were supposed to cheat, and cheating badly would cost us. But if the questions were hard enough to force us to cheat, and they'd have to be, or the whole test would be pointless, then chances were only very intelligent, or high level, people could answer them. Which meant there were plants in the exam, chunin or higher. My mind was noting Ibiki's time limit setting, you have one hour to do this test, and the tenth question mystery, the tenth question will be given to you when ten minutes remain, and at the same time, I was tracking down the strong chakra sources in the crowd, separating strong genin and actual chunin. I pinned one down as a definite plant a bare two seconds before Ibiki yelled, begin, and I flipped my paper. I put my pencil to the paper and listened closely, shutting my eyes unconsciously as I zeroed in on my target, the Chunin plant. As he started to write, not too fast, fortunately, I copied his pencil's movements, listening to the slight scratches it made as graphite was rubbed into the paper, my sharp ears able to tell what direction the characters were going in, how far, and how far apart each new stroke was. This was a skill I had learned in the academy when we needed to copy things from the board, I had taught myself to follow the teacher's chalk movements with only my ears. I couldn't read it from the board, but if I heard it being written, I could copy it perfectly. This guy obviously knew all the answers to the questions, and I copied them all dutifully, finishing a good oh, ten minutes into the test. Now I had nothing to do. Great. First I checked my answers, to make sure the chunin I had picked out wasn't a moron. They seemed viable, but considering I didn't even understand half the questions, that didn't exactly count for much. Although I was pretty sure the codebreaker was right. Codes were something I understood, my sealing experiences and reading between the lines helping me along. Next I followed the chakra flickers flashing through the room as best I could, recognizing the Byakugan from Hinata, Niji, and another Hyuga I didn't know, Sasuke was using the Sharingan behind me. The Demonica Kredita from Suna was using something near the ceiling that just reeked of his chakra, and Ino was stealing answers off Sakura with her mind transfer jutsu. Some guy from Rain, or maybe Kiri, was doing something with chakra and what sounded like needles, and one of the people I didn't know the village of was doing something with bells. Dot and now I was bored again. I flipped over my test paper to find the back completely blank, and couldn't hold back a grin. Now, what to draw? I pondered this for a few seconds, my mind flashing through all the conversations I'd heard today for inspiration, and before I knew it my hand was drawing, flickering over the paper in broad strokes, and I just went with the flow and drew. Twenty minutes later, I brushed my fingers over the full-length sketch, raising an eyebrow at what I saw. A young woman, maybe twenty years old. Wearing fishnet, a skirt, a trench coat and not much else. Her hair was pinned up at the back but the ends fanned over her head, and her face was adorned with a rather evil-looking grin. Sadistic. Psychotic. Satanic. She was holding a kunai nonchalantly with one hand, her other hand making an unfamiliar seal, the barest hints of chakra shading her outline. I had no idea who she was, no, wait, I did. Her name was Anko, couldn't remember last name and I had actually seen her face when I was three. I think. The rest of her. I think there was a report on her making special jounin a while back, and that had a series of photographs in it. That I had borrowed temporarily. Apparently I had pieced them together. I stared at the picture for a few seconds, wondering what self-respecting female would wear something like this, before I added a caption underneath just to freak out anyone who knew this Enko person. Dot and I was bored again. I spent the next fifteen minutes scribbling aimlessly on my paper, until finally Ibiki bellowed, pencils down. It's time for the tenth question. There was the sound of more than a hundred pencils clattering onto the desks as everyone dropped them. No one dared to make a sound as Ibiki started to speak again. 
Now, before I give out the tenth question, I'm imposing another rule. You can choose whether or not to take this question. If you choose not to, you and your entire team fail, and you can try again next time. But if you choose to take the question, and you get it wrong, then you and your team can never take the Chunin exams ever again. There was instant chaos, people screaming, that's not fair, left, right and center. I pinned my hands over my ears in a doomed attempt to block out the noise and waited several minutes for the din to subside. Eventually Ibiki solved the problem. Shut up. I pried my hands off my ringing ears in blessed silence, ready to block them again if it restarted, but Ibiki kept talking. I make the rules. For those of you who've taken this exam before and been allowed to return, well, unfortunately for you lot, this is my first year proctoring. He grinned. I make the rules, and if you don't want to risk failing permanently, put up your hands and leave. For a few seconds nothing happened. Then someone stood up and bolted, not someone I knew. That seemed to have been the floodgate, as suddenly the teams were dropping like flies. I sat patiently and hoped that Sakura would have the guts to wait it out. Hopefully me telling them beforehand about this doozy of a tenth question would help them to hold out. People just kept leaving, some slowly losing their confidence as the pressure poured on, others snapping in an instant under the strain, and still others holding firm. I waited, sensing the emotional states of the people around me wavering through their chakra, the flashes of disappointment, terror, anger, the whole deal. This had to be a new skill, I'd never noticed anything even approaching this magnitude before. Although I had to wonder uneasily what had triggered it. The girl sitting beside me, Hinata, I now realized, was shaking slightly, her clothing rustling faintly, her chakra flickering with indecision. Another team dropped out, this one a leaf team, not one of the rookie nine. But it was only a matter of time, wasn't it, before someone chickened out, broke under the mounting stress, was that killer intent I was sensing? Is that everyone? Ibiki asked menacingly. You're all going to risk your careers on this one question, and if someone can't answer it. There was no response, aside from two more teams dropping out. That's it. Well then, you all pass. What? The girl from Suna, Tamari, shouted out. What happened to the tenth question? There is no tenth question. Ibiki retorted. Or rather, the tenth question is the decision to continue, in spite of the risks, even though you didn't know what was coming. There was some startled muttering, and I thought I heard Sakura turn around in her seat to look at me, but I might have been imagining it. What does that have to do with it, someone called, grass, if I wasn't wrong? As a chunin, do you have the ability to say, let's turn back, halfway through a dangerous mission, just because you don't have enough information, was Ibiki's thunderous reply. As a chunin you have to take risks. You have to be willing to fly blind in enemy territory with no idea where you're going or what you're up against. You have to be prepared for anything. You cannot turn down a mission because you think it's too dangerous, we are ninja. The ninja life is danger incarnate. I nodded in understanding. The last question was a test of all that and more. A chunin has to make decisions that could destroy their team if they pick the wrong option. The tenth question weeded out those who weren't ready to make those kinds of decisions, or weren't ready for the consequences. So you have all passed the first exam, Ibiki repeated. Your second exam will be, the window imploded and I instantly ducked out of the way of any shards. Glass is painful. I heard someone land on the floor and thought I heard the clank of weaponry accompanying it as well, but I focused on the voice now shouting at us. All right, maggots. I'm Mitarashi Anko, the proctor of the second exam. I want to see you at Training Ground 44, also known as the Forest of Death, in one hour. Got that? I winced and covered my ears. Err. Lud. Well. Get lost. Ibiki was busily gathering up all the exams from the desks, some had even ended up on the floor, when Hitaki Kakashi, a jounin of one of the rookie nine, came in, eyes glued to his rated orange book. Hello, Kakashi, he said mildly, 
picking up another exam paper and considering whether to shred it on the spot. What brings you here? The book snapped shut, and Ibiki knew that the other man meant business. I've been noticing some odd things about one of my students and wondered how he was acting around others, as you already know. He mock glared and Ibiki grinned unrepentantly. Ibiki, this might be important. Did you notice the blonde, Uzumaki Naruto, doing anything strange in your exam at all? Ibiki shrugged, picking up another paper. He wrote all his answers down with his eyes shut, for one thing. And he didn't seem at all bothered by the Dordai Ultimatum 10th question. He glanced at another paper and raised an eyebrow. Here's his exam now, he said, noting the message, I'm bored, scrawled around the edge in a continuous border, which didn't bother him. No, what was confusing was the way his answer handwriting was a startling imitation of the chunins that Ibiki had planted a couple of rows in front of him. Interesting. Then he turned the paper over, and nearly had a heart attack. Ibiki? Are you alright? You look like your spleen just imploded, said Kakashi, sounding slightly anxious. Without a word Ibiki flipped the paper around to show Kakashi a perfect sketch of Anko in one of her favorite battle positions, her left hand in a strengthening seal, her other one holding a kunai ready for a kuchiyos jutsu. The evil grin was more than perfect, and the gleam in her eyes made the black and white image come to life. He read the caption underneath. Dot she's coming. Kakashi's law. I am slowly being driven insane by these genin. I went to check Naruto's progress in the chunin exams, and his handwriting was perfectly identical to the chunins he had been copying off. Or rather the chunin they assume he was copying off, as no one actually caught him at it. Then he wrote, I'm bored, to make a border around his exam paper. But what took the cake was his new sketch. On the back was a perfect drawing of Mitarashi Anko, the proctor for the second exam, who I'm quite sure Naruto had never met until she was introduced as the second proctor. He certainly wouldn't have had enough time to sketch her then. And the caption was freaky. Dut she's coming. It was enough to scare Ibiki briefly. I have attached it as a reference. Also, before he went into the exams, he paused in the doorway, and then told his teammates the entire purpose of the first test and what to do with the tenth question. There is definitely something going on here. Note, how did Naruto know I was in ANBU? 11. Snakebite I was checking my backpack for the eighteenth time by feel as I walked towards the second exam with Sasuke, checking that I had packed everything I needed, did the pack feel too light? What if I'd forgotten something? Were my new tags in here? Had I remembered the extra bundles for my teammates? Ten seconds of frantic scrabbling later, I remembered I'd put them in a pocket of my new pants, Sasuke, who had made me wear them for the exams, informed me they were black, which I wasn't happy about, but he said there was an orange stripe up the hem, so maybe they weren't so bad. Hey, Sasuke, I said to get his attention, pulling out three bundles of rectangular paper sheaves with ink seals carefully drawn on them, held together with bands of colored paper, and gently tossing them to him. Here. What are these for? he asked as he opened a velcroed pocket to tuck them away. They're my latest tags. Red band is explosive tags, my own variety, yellow band is shock tags, and white band is flash tags. He made a sound of acknowledgement as we kept walking. Having any luck with them? What are you calling them? Freeze tags. I shook my head. Uh huh, they're difficult. Ice isn't a normal element, so I've been having trouble finding seals. That kid, Haku, said that his element was a byproduct of a kekiai. Genkai. I trailed off, frowning, before starting to grin maniacally. Aha. I think I've got it. I began to scribble in a notebook, suddenly having gotten an idea for combining the two elemental seals ice was made up of, water and wind, but they wouldn't mesh, I could see that straight away. I would have to modify them enough to work together, but not so much that they would cease to be what they were. I was still scribbling wildly when we stopped at the edge of the forest of death, a good distance from the other waiting genin, 
Sasuke knew I worked better with quiet, and we still needed to be close enough that we'd know when the exam started. I finished reworking the water release seal I had hopes I could use and started to fiddle with the next one, barely noticing when Sakura came up to us until she actually said hello. Oh. Sakura. I have some tag seals for you. I said, tugging the bundles out of my pocket and separating the ones for Sakura from the test ones I was planning to use in the exam, with the enemy ninja as guinea pigs. Red is explosive, white is flash, yellow is shock. Wrap them around a kunai or apply to a surface and put in a bit of chakra. These ones have 10 second timers, I'm still trying to get the remote fuses to work. And I don't trust the impact fuses either. What are those purple ones for? She asked, stowing her own tags in her backpack. Uh, what color stripe? I asked distractedly, putting the handful of tags away and returning to my seal book with a frown. No, that bit wasn't going to work, the nodes were all wrong. Purple band, yellow stripe, Sakura answered me. The paper was pale purple, too. Ah. Uh, those are my new poison tags. I mumbled, erasing part of the wind seal. I want to test them in the exam. Yellow stripe means they're tranquilizer tags. They still need direct contact with the enemy to work. Damn. Stupid wind seal. These things are so hard to work with. What about the green tags, she asked, still bothering me. Damn it, couldn't she see I was trying to work here? They were an attempt at a leaf signature seal gone awry, I muttered, tapping my chin with my pencil. What if I shifted that part, moved the second node? No, that would reverse it. But if I moved it there and connected it to those two chakra paths? Aha! I think I've got this. No, wait. Arg! Stupid freeze tag. Uh, wait, the green tag seals. They're mud tags. Not lethal but good for a scare. Unless they're the new ones I was going to test. In which case they're quite possibly lethal until I work the kinks out of them. Listen up, maggots. I heard the proctor bellow. As my team shifted towards her, me putting my seal notebook back in my bag, I caught her muttering faintly about aspirin, panadine, and Tylenol, accompanied by a strong whiff of alcohol, and I winced. Hey guys. I said quietly, getting my teammates' attention. Talk softly around the proctor and be nice. She has a hangover, the mother of all hangovers, from the smell I'm getting. Sasuke muttered something under his breath. Something to do with so why did she break the window, then? I listened to Anko's explanation of the second test, frowning internally. This could be a problem, I'd never been in the forest of death before. I was working totally blind, instead of having a pre-researched map to help. Then I let out a slow breath, reminding myself that even the wave mission turned out okay. We'd get through this. Somehow. Here, Sasuke said, handing me a sheet of paper and tapping it near the bottom. Sign this. What's it for? I heard Hangover Lady say something about waivers, I told. Him as I skimmed my fingers over the area he'd tapped to find that a sign here line. It's to say we know the dangers of this test. You know, so if we get killed the village won't get in trouble. I nodded as I scrawled my messy signature on the paper. I expected something like that. Mentally, though, I was frowning and taking note of that. This exam would be a perfect time for the up-and-coming Genin teams to get snuffed, with no problems. An ambitious village could even sneak in undercover top ninja to kill off as much of the competition as possible. And it would be almost impossible to prove, and then react. I snorted aloud at my own paranoia and handed the waiver back to Sasuke. Like anyone would have the audacity to do that. Then again, everyone would assume no one would have the audacity to paint the Hokage monument or electrify the staff room coffee maker. I was scanning the chakra signatures of the crowd, trying to sense anyone who was off-key, and taking note that that gar guy was sending out waves of his murderous aura, when I heard the faint rustle and then the skim of metal cutting the air, 
and I instantly ducked out of the way, tipping my head aside and spinning on my heel to face whoever had thrown the kanai at me. Now that I think about it, I reacted very calmly, considering. I think I'm getting too used to getting randomly ambushed. Yo, brat, pay attention or you might lose your head, the proctor taunted. I didn't respond except to straighten up and narrow my eyes at her, tilting my head slightly. She was unlikely to actually kill me, too much paperwork, so she was just trying to psych me out. A tiny trickle of blood ran down my cheek, but I wasn't bothered, the cut wasn't serious. I had barely felt it at all anyway. Che, she snorted, then I went stiff as someone came up behind me, edging away, closer to Sasuke, before focusing my every sense on the suppressed chakra essence. It was just wrong. The man reeked of snake and poison, since I had hated for years, and I felt my lip curling for a second before I forcibly blanked out my expression. This signature felt kind of like Kakashisensei's, or old man Hokage's, sort of solid, heavy, and how old is this guy? He can't be under thirty. But muffled around the edges, so that if someone who wasn't as good as me sensed it, all they would feel was genin level chakra. But I was better. I'd had practice. And after wave I sensed the shadow, the void, of so much more chakra behind it, lurking in wait. It was a creepy feeling. This signature meant trouble. You dropped your kunai, a snake-like voice hissed, and I recoiled away from the reek of venom as the proctor said, Ah, thanks. Now if you'd like to stop leaking killing intent, grass brat, before I take it as a threat. Her voice was mild, but there was a hidden thread of pain in it. Killer intent. I had barely noticed it, although there was quite a bit, considering we hadn't even started yet. Ah, uh, sorry, the now. Identified grass neen hissed, I suppose the smell of blood got me a little. Excited. Shut up and get to your gates, Anko ordered, and I followed my teammates to the gate that they had apparently chosen while I was sensing out the competition. You guys ready? Sasuke asked, more to me than Sakura. I nodded cheerfully, taking a deep breath to steady myself and fingering the tag bundles in my pocket, while Sakura assured him that she was as ready as she was going to get. Fui. The whistle blew, and I heard the gates in front of us creak open. We took off running. We stuck to the ground for a few minutes, Sasuke's hand brushing the trees and my teammates' footsteps guiding me through the forest. For quite a while we just ran, getting some distance, until Sasuke paused and tapped my hand, a signal we needed to talk. I quickly the area, finding no one, and then scanned it again more slowly, even checking underground and sensing nothing more than wildlife. I eventually nodded. Okay, we're clear, but keep it quiet. Thanks, Sasuke said softly. We need a password, so that if we get split up we won't be welcoming enemies into our party by mistake. Something easy to remember but hard to guess. Maybe the password should be individual, to make it harder to infiltrate, Sakura suggested. I frowned suddenly and held up two fingers, a signal for silence I hoped they'd recognize, there, no, there, a flicker, not quite right. There. I focused in on the spot, not too concerned, but wary nonetheless. Someone trying to spy, the chakra shielding was only high genin slash low chunin, no real issue, but his vitals had given him away. Not a threat, just some random from. Aim, I think. We shouldn't stay in one place for too long, I said aloud, gently testing my senses to check if his teammates were in range. I didn't think so. Sasuke got my hint and we started to run again, flitting between the trees and quickly leaving the rain mean behind, he couldn't keep up with us and stay hidden. When we stopped again I checked the area, then started to speak quietly. Okay guys, I'm going to warn you now, look out for that team from grass, and stay the hell away from them. There is something very wrong about them and I don't want us to be the ones to find out what it is. Second team not to go near is the sand team. That Gara guy, there's something not right about his chakra. He could probably kill any one of us in an instant, and again, I'd rather not find out. His teammates are pretty dangerous, too, but nothing on his level. 
All the other teams are fair game, but keep an eye out for those two. I'll give you any warning I can, but I don't know what kind of stealth they have. They may be able to slip past. They're only Jenin, Sakura argued, quietly. They can't be that good, you can sense Jounin easily, even when they're hiding their chakra. I shook my head flatly. The grass team, at least one of them is so far above Jenin level it's not funny, I said grimly. I sensed out his chakra, it's suppressed, very well, but I've been doing this long enough to sort of shadow sense what they're hiding. I swallowed and fell silent, until Sasuke asked, what power level would you guess? Jounin, hi Chunin. I shook my head slowly, remembering that heavy weight in my awareness. I think we're talking Kage level and up. Sasuke swore softly. What the hell are they playing at? Someone like that could slaughter every genin here without breaking a sweat. I don't know, but be on your guard, I said flatly. Now password, fast, before someone shows. Team for now, we may do individual later in the test when things get more desperate. Let the fire begin, and we fight until the last one stands, Sasuke said quietly. Return phrase is, when the last one standing falls, the fire burns from the ashes, and the cycle begins again. Got it? Wait, I ordered, my mind deserting the password problem for a more immediate one, what the hell is that? What's what? Sakura asked. That noise. It's like. I don't know. I turned to face it, and felt the blood drain out of my face as I finally recognized the sound, and the magnitude. Start running. What? What is it? Sakura demanded, to my annoyance they hadn't moved. It's a goddamn giant snake. Move your goddamn asses. Suddenly grasping the gravity of the situation, the pair started sprinting, me on their heels. I'm starting to see what that Enko chick meant when she said, dangerous fauna. Sasuke called, wrapping his knuckles sharply on a nearby tree that I immediately dodged to the left to avoid. Hate to see what she meant for the flora. I was about to agree when something roughly the size of a building slammed into my side, knocking me flying. Low hanging branches and foliage whipped against my face and limbs as I rolled to a stop in the shrubbery. For several seconds I lay still, ears ringing, before shaking my head and scrambling to my feet. Sasuke. I called uncertainly, turning my head and trying to listen for my team's footsteps. Sakura. Then I couldn't help screaming as something hot and wet closed over me, and everything turned upside down and I was dizzy and sick and I couldn't breathe and the smell was horrendous, snake. The fucking snake. The fucking snake ate me. Ew. All right, this thing is so dead. I snarled, my voice muffled to my own ears, struggling in the snake's throat. Kage Bunshin. The tiny, cramped, damp, moving space was starting to fill up with shadow clones, and I held the jutsu, creating more and more and more and more, there was a muffled shriek, and then the wet pressure was gone and me and the hundred Kage Bunshin stumbled and landed on the ground. You, one of them groaned. Was that thing a summon or a real snake, another asked. I spat, trying to clear my mouth, then retched, emptying my stomach onto the grass, the acid searing my mouth and throat and burning away the taste. I moaned, and my stomach wrenched again, making me cough and spit at the foul taste. I think it was real, I'm tasting blood that ain't mine. Yuuk, whined another clone. I staggered to my feet, still spitting violently, and turned in a small circle, trying to get my bearings back. Spread out and search for the others. If you find them, flare your chakra or something to get our attention, and everyone circle in. Got it? Yes sir, a hundred voices answered me, and soon the air was filled with stumbles, curses, and the occasional poof of a clone accidentally dispelling itself when it tripped over. More than one walked head first into trees, making me roll my eyes, God, clones were really pathetic sometimes. I shoved my irritation aside at a sudden flash of familiar chakra, the sweeping rush I would always recognize as my own backed with Kyuubi's fire. 
one of my clones had found my teammates, frantically running on and calling out, trying to find me. I took off at a sprint in the direction of the chakra flash, which was rapidly dying away, the clone had dispelled itself on something, with other bunshin on my tail, closing in on their location. The forest of death was actually kinda cool, I mused, dodging a thorn shrub that had just killed a clone. Maybe me and Sasuke could come here to train sometimes. I half paused as I came close enough to begin to hear speech, confused by what my senses were registering. Don't tell me that snake was poisonous or something. None of it made sense, it sounded like me talking, but it wasn't one of my clones, hell, it wasn't even my chakra. That made no sense, henge. Illusion. Genjutsu. Aha. That was it, someone henged as me. At least I had recognized it as an illusion this time. I clearly heard my own voice reciting the password I only half remembered, and I slowed up a little out of uncertainty. Launching myself straight in there was, flatly, not a good idea. The chakra I was sensing. Wasn't it the same as that Rainin's? I couldn't tell, it was warped slightly by the henge, and I was still too far off. I had to get closer. Sasuke, it seemed, wasn't fooled by the henge or the perfect password, as the next thing I heard from him was a harsh, how many fingers am I holding up? The confused answer of five was not the one he was looking for, and he attacked instantly. I swore under my breath as they started to move off again, leaving behind the rain ninja as they continued to search for me. Morons. They'd find me a whole lot faster if they stood still and let me catch up to them. I brushed rather violently against a tree that I hadn't known was there and stumbled with a curse, swiping at my stinging arm. Stupid bark, stupid bush, stupid thorns, stupid forest, stupid team. I couldn't go any slower, not if I ever wanted to catch up, but she's, what I wouldn't give for a map right now. Then a pulse of killer intent and venomous chakra flushed through the forest, and I nearly choked in horror at the sensations rushing through me, stumbling slightly before running on. My sensitivity to killer intent was dulled naturally thanks to the furball constantly projecting it from the back of my head, but this. This was fresh, pure, unsealed, unmuffled murder. Someone was going to die. I just hoped to Kami it wasn't Sasuke or Sakura. My clones were attempting to follow the noises and were systematically dispelling themselves crashing into trees, shrubs and large tigers. With a growl of idiots I took off in what I thought was the vague direction of my teammates, though I was probably just randomly making the feeling of it's this way up, as I knew I was completely lost, and promptly smashed into a tree myself. I followed them on ground level with a curse, rubbing my sore cheek, no way could I do tree jumping in an unmapped area. I'd kill myself in four seconds flat. I just wished they'd slow down, I was already bruised up from all the trees I couldn't see, and it was a miracle I'd missed as many as I had. I had to catch up to them. And suddenly, I could hear them talking again, hear Sasuke's harsh warning, hear Sakura's panting, hear the softer breathing of the Neen who was facing them, sense his shadowed, suppressed, dangerous chakra. Hear his sneering, friendly the voice with the evil so badly hidden. I sprinted up the nearest tree, gripping with both hands and feet and then springing from all fours, from an animalistic stance at the snake essence, teeth bared and a feral scream of rage ripping out of my throat. How dare he hurt my teammates! I smelt the blood, smelt the fear, smelt the rage and terror and pain as I lashed out at the snake, barely missing and accidentally knocking a scroll from his fingers that had the faint sign of one of those scrolls Anko had been handing out. There were twin flickers of relief from my teammate's chakra, and one of annoyance from the snakes. It seems you survived, he hissed, and I pinned the irritation in his voice with a smirk. Sorry to disappoint you, but you'll find it extremely hard to kill me, I snarled, springing towards my teammates and hoping I wasn't about to miss the branch and hit the floor. To my relief there was solid wood under my feet, and I stood back up on two legs as I held out the scroll I'd snatched and said, Hey, is this important? Naruto. Sasuke began calmly, I love you. That's the earth scroll we need. Really? 
I turned my head to look at the scroll I was holding. Wow, I'm good. Killer intent flared from the snake, making all three of us wince, and I said sweetly, Ah, does the snakey not like being ignored? Well, too bad, Bob. I tucked the scroll into an inside pocket of my jacket, to make it harder to steal back. Oh, that sounded weird, Sakura snorted shakily. Specially coming from him, Sasuke agreed with a tache that translated to laughter. Then we all dodged as a volley of shuriken came our way. I felt Sasuke's chakra fluctuate as he formed a Gukaku, and followed up his movements with a hail of kanai, tagging three of them with my own brand of explosives. Apparently Sasuke noticed the strips of paper, as he immediately dodged back, ready to dive for cover. Who may need to work on the camouflage of those tags. Boom. There was a massive explosion, and I could hear the tree creaking ominously as the snake's chakra hurriedly split itself into several copies, I'd never sensed the jutsu before, but it had the taste of a doton, so. Dirt clones, if I had to guess. In the rush of adrenaline and terror it was impossible to track him, and I was already in trouble, I knew, I had no idea where I was, where the branches were. All I could do was track Sasuke's movements as he sprang from branch to branch and attacked the clone sporadically, adding in an explosive tagged kunai whenever I could pin down a clone with my hearing. Sakura was throwing shuriken, I think, and trying to weave a genjutsu, but even I could have told her that it was a wasted effort, this guy was way out of our league. We needed to get out of here and fast. Sasuke. I bellowed, wrapping a tag around another kanai, this one a test tag. He ran for it straight away, landing near Sakura, and as the blade shot towards the grass neem I took out a pair of mud clones that had been sneaking up on my teammates. Boom. Okay, that was so not the intended effect, but I need to remember that formula, I decided, ears still ringing. The angry hissing from my left was not unexpected, and I merely bared my teeth in response to the wordless threat, reaching for another tag. Sasuke and Sakura suddenly let out choked cries of horror and I sprang back instantly, backing against the tree trunk before looking at them and calling anxiously, what's wrong? Sasuke, what's happening? No answer but a strangled sob which only scared me more. Sasuke. So Shikumi doesn't affect you, eh, the man said silkily. You don't even bat an eyelid at killer intent that would knock out a tiger. You're stronger than you look. I'll take that as a compliment, you snake, I growled. Sasuke, snap out of it. Team. Wake up. What the hell is wrong with you? The enemy ninja let out a disturbing peal of laughter, and then Sasuke's chakra flared as he grabbed Sakura and sprang to another branch, stifling a cry of pain. Sasuke. I'm fine, Dobe, it's just a scratch. His sharp, gasping reply was music to my ears and I relaxed, relieved. Then I let the anger build up inside, needing the furious power for the growing confrontation. This guy was so dead. Sasuke had strung wires across the trees, I could hear the wind itself being cut and slashed by the razor edges of the metal threads. I grinned viciously. I could feel the heavy, choking, burning chakra of the QB surfacing, felt it start to sear my coils, burn my skin, and I waited no longer, letting go of my anger and lashing out. Instantly the grass neem bolted out of reach, brushing one of Sasuke's tripwires and having close to a thousand volts shot through him in a burst of raw chakra. I grinned again. The shock tags had been worth the long hours and repeatedly exploded living room. He landed, breathing heavily, and I heard Sasuke's quick breathing a few meters above and to my right. My heartbeat thundered in my ears, but I could still hear clearly enough for the snake's words to reach my mind, well, this is a problem that needs to be fixed. And suddenly there was an insane amount of pressure on my stomach and I recoiled sharply with a rising cry as fire was dragged through my chakra coils in a spiraling explosion of pain. I fell to my knees, digging one hand into the branch and driving splinters into my fingers as I crouched, doubled over with pain, but the slivers of wood meant nothing in the face of the agony shredding its way through my veins. I clamped down on my scream, 
forcing it all inwards, pulling my mind under control in time to hear Sasuke shout, Naruto. Trembling, I pulled my feet back underneath me and stood up unsteadily. I'm okay. A lie if there ever was one. But the pain was starting to fade, and through the roaring in my ears that was slowly dying down I could hear Sasuke frantically fighting the snake guy, trying to drive him back with his katan jutsu and swiftly losing ground himself. Oi, team. I bellowed, and hurled a thick chunk of bark at our opponent. Stupid, yes. But Sasuke saw the streaks of blue ink against the white tag wrapped around it and covered his eyes instantly as he leaped backwards, letting me follow it up with a red inked tag as the grass neen snatched the bark chip out of the air easily. I grinned as I felt the first fuse give way. I actually felt the light blasting my skin, making it tingle slightly with the force of it, and felt extremely pleased with how those amplifying seals had worked out. I wasn't sure how they'd do with the flash tags, so I'd made my teams without them, in case they had the random side effect of making the whole thing explode in your hands. I can deal with that, chakra shields while I'm working, and Kyuubi's oh so pleasant influence, but in the battlefield, that wasn't so okay. The snake's howl of pain made the hazard well worth it. Sasuke. Back off. I hollered, and half a second later, the green inked, high-powered explosive tag went off, and this time, the tree definitely collapsed. The green ink tags aren't perfect yet, but man, they pack one hell of a punch. I leaped over to my team, staggering more than I'd have liked on impact, and gasped out, what the hell happened? I told you guys to steer clear of this team, this guy in particular. I put a hand to my stomach with a wince, there was angry red-hot chakra roiling from where it had been suppressed, and it hurt like anything, my muscles still shaking slightly from the shock of having it dragged away. And it was fading fast, blackening in my awareness, but I didn't have the time or concentration to deal with it, my teammates, and the snake at the same time. Team and enemy took priority. Naruto, how many fingers am I holding up? Sasuke panted, sounding worn out. I stiffened. What the hell? I'm not that much of an idiot, Sasuke. This is so not the time. And you call me a moron? He breathed a sigh of relief and said, I guess to Sakura, it's the real one this time. Then, to me again, what the hell happened to you? You're covered in blood. Are you hurt? How'd you find us again? I sensed the snake's chakra flickering back to life alarmingly and reacted instantly, shoving both my teammates away as he pounced, a long blade singing through the air. Crap. He had a sword. Various swear words. Various bad swear words. I threw a handful of shuriken at him, making him bounce back to stick to a nearby tree trunk, painfully aware of my fast dwindling supply. I had a lot more in a summoning scroll, in my backpack, somewhat inaccessible in the middle of a life-or-death fight. Sasuke had set off one of his wires with a karyuden in an attempt to burn him, even slightly, and Sakura was pitching in with a genjutsu that, while not fully affecting him, would probably pull him a little off balance. Then I sucked in a breath as his chakra suddenly appeared in front of me, and I heard the blade swinging, I leaned back, twisting away from the razor-sharp edge I could hear cutting the air, it barely skimmed my shoulder, I couldn't lean back far enough, a line of burning pain slashed across my sightless eyes and I barely had time to register the blood running down my face before I was kicked violently backwards, landing hard against a tree. All the breath was forced out of my lungs and I could hardly sense myself slumping on the branch, hardly hear Sakura and Sasuke both screaming my name, all of my attention focused on the explosion of pain centered just behind my forehead, lightning blasts of pain building up against my grip on consciousness and I was barely holding on when I heard, when Sasuke screamed. It wasn't a yelp of pain or shock, or a shout of fear. It was a scream of utter agony. I forced my mind to focus in on his chakra, which was flickering fiercely, the snakes backing away from him. There was something, a flux, a violent change, on his neck, the corner of his left collarbone slash shoulder. My friend had half collapsed, kneeling on the branch, still screaming, still screaming as loudly as he could, but I could hardly hear it because someone else was screaming, was Sakura hurt, 
had the snake gotten her, too, no, I was screaming. As soon as I registered it I choked it back, clamping down on the sound, and suddenly everything around me was that much clearer. I could hear the snake freak steady hissing again, hear Sakura's frantic attempts to calm Sasuke down, hear my best friend's screams with an all-new clarity. I snarled furiously and leapt forwards, my mind focusing on just one thought, making the snake hurt, hurt him as much as he'd. Hurt Sasuke, making him scream like Sasuke was screaming. He wasn't expecting me to recover so fast and so failed to react in time to fend me off properly, receiving several heavy blows before he threw me away. I very nearly missed the branch, dragging myself onto it with muscles that were shaking with badly suppressed rage, and got ready to spring again, ready to attack. I was pulled up short by Sakura's cry and instantly reeled back, jumping back to my team and abandoning the snake in an instant. I staggered on landing and actually went down on my knees, feeling excruciatingly dizzy. Blood loss, I thought dazedly, it was hard to focus on the fact that if the snake neem came back we'd be very dead, and I didn't even remember him leaving, and Sasuke was still screaming and my head hurt like fire, Sasuke's scream suddenly cut out and his chakra dropped, making me flinch, but I soon recognized that he had passed out, presumably from the pain. Which left me in charge. Greet. Sakura, can you carry Sasuke? I gasped out, getting one foot underneath me and trying to stand. At her affirmative noise, can you carry him and support me? I'm too dizzy to jump straight. You need to take us to a spot to recover. We can't stay here, we made a whole lot of noise, and there's blood everywhere, there'll be teams all over us in minutes. I, I'll try, she stammered, sounding terrified. And she didn't try to say anything else. Hey guys. I hope you liked the video, then don't forget to like and share this video also subscribe to the channel. This is Raven Sage signing off.